So if you look at the ops risk life cycle, really there are various aspects of it. What you're doing is the end state is uh, actually trying to calculate your economic capital as well as all of the regulatory and internal reports that you need around it. For that, A, you need to you know, define your risk categories, right? So, so the lots of hierarchies that you would need to define for that, your business line, your business processes, uh, you know, your location hierarchy, legal hierarchies, all of those right, need to be defined. And then you need to capture lost data across these different hierarchies. Right? Uh, when you actually start capturing lost data, typically you know, one big problem that banks have is that there isn't sufficient lost data to, be, uh, to actually enable a lot of the modeling. So you also need external loss data, and you want to actually transform some of that external data into the internal configuration. For instance, if you actually got loss data from a very large bank, and you think you're a medium-sized bank, and therefore your exposures uh, you know, are likely to be that much smaller, you can actually use, uh, say, a regression test thing to actually rebalance the loss data that you've received, either by revenue or you know, typical parameters, and actually uh, change some of that data to your needs, to the bank's needs. The second step is uh, to actually model a lot of these uh, risks, right? So you want to actually define what do you expect the losses to be, and and banks have done that in you know through SOX, the audit department, the L, uh, the line of business, etc. So the various different departments within the bank. So you want to define what your what you expect your losses to be. What are the key risk indicators around some of the risks that you have? You know, how do you, and get data around those key risk indicators. Define thresholds similarly for your key risk indicators. You know, number of loans processed per employee per uh, hour. You know, that would be a key risk indicator. If it goes above a certain threshold, that means, uh, you know, you're probably going to end up processing some loans the wrong way. You also want to define then your causes and controls for each of those risks. So that whole, you know, you're setting up your whole risk control framework to help say what do you expect your losses to be, right? You capture your loss data, you've actually defined a framework for what you expect your losses to be, so you can then analyze a lot of that data, both from a quantitative perspective as well as a qualitative perspective, right? So you want to actually say, okay, based on my loss data, I expect my economic capital to be this, and there are various approaches to actually calculating loss data, and those are, because operation risk is a new, this thing, uh, new field, there are a lot of, uh, theories on how actually you know the the models to be used for actually calculating loss data there's a loss distribution approach from a quantitative perspective the scenario modeling etc uh, you also so the third you know is to actually calculate your economic capital and uh, you also need to analyze the data to actually mitigate some of your risks now so so there's the reporting aspect of it uh, where you're actually looking at how does your actual losses, how do your actual losses compare to the, uh, what you had predicted your losses to be, right? And then you want to actually mitigate some of those. So you define additional controls around the areas which you've identified are of risk to your business, right? And therefore it becomes a, uh, you know, a cycle because you're defining additional controls, measuring the impact of those controls again on your losses, and then uh, you know, redefining and, uh, the controls and the causes.